Okay, and if you go to hoodincome.com slash share slash void 2fla you can download the CS6 version of the second super simple avoider game. Now I'm going to press control enter to run this game here. And you can see that if I move the arrow keys I can avoid things and every time I avoid things uh, I get an extra score. Now I can see that this is a little bit glitched up because I'm actually uh, accidentally hitting it by one pixel but we'll worry about that in the third video. But This is pretty darn close. I can move around and unfortunately I can move off the screen which is not pretty cool but I am increasing the score and uh, we're making some progress. So let's close this and take a look at the code. So if I click on frame 1, there's some actions there. Let's go to Window Actions or F9 and let's try to um, tease out what's new. So what I have here that's new from last time is I have a variable score. I made this uh, myself. You could have called this variable s or variable sss. I called it score because it's descriptive. What kind of variable is score? It's a number. So capital N number. Uh, action script here is uh, case sensitive. Make sure you don't forget the capitals. And this is blue. Uh, score is a is a number, and we're going to assign it the value zero. That's the initial value. <clears throat> now, if you Google how to generate a random number in Action Script 3, you'll probably find something like this. You don't have to understand exactly how this works uh, right now, but for now, we copy and paste the function, and the function takes in two values the minimum number, comma, the maximum number. And the function returns an actual number. This is the actual return type. So, whenever a function actually has a colon and returns something other than void, the function actually becomes that value. You'll see uh, the random range used a little bit later in this code here. So it's going to return a, some kind of integer number. So we have an onEnter function and in the past we increased the y position by 5 and uh, this time we're checking to see if the enemy is past the bottom of the screen. If movie 2, that's the red box, the enemy, if its y position is greater than stage dot stage height, this is built into Flash. Regardless of how large you set your stage to be, it automatically calculates how high it is. So this is good coding practice to use this as opposed to hard coding in a number. So if the y position is greater than the bottom of the screen, and the y values get bigger as you go down, then movie2.y equals negative 50. We're going to move the red square to the top of the screen and I choose negative 50 instead of 0 because I want it to actually scroll in. So we have here the random range function that we just uh, copied off the internet <clears throat> and we pass in 0 to 3. I wanted to generate a number between 0 and 3. So it could, the number could be 0, 1, 2, 3. So it includes 0 and 3 as the endpoints. So the number is equal to this value. Notice how the function actually becomes the value. Imagine this became the number 2. So this is almost like saying number equals 2. But this function can also return a 0 or a 3 or a 1. So what's nice about this uh, statement here uh, is that movie2.x movie equals num times 50. So 0 times 50 is 0. 1 times 50 is 50. 2 times 50 is 10, uh, 100, <clears throat> and 3 times 50 is 150. This here is a more efficient coding than having an if statement and saying if num equals 0, then set the movie 2.x to some value, and else if num uh, is equals to 1, that would be more inefficient coding. Instead of having a multiple if statements, I just have one line of code which does it all in one shot. This is more elegant. Okay, so we have uh, <clears throat> a score here. Every time we do uh, deke out the enemy, the score is going to increase by 1. And so the idea here is that the score is an actual number. Remember, we, we chose, we declared the score as a number here. 
And when you're talking about text boxes, text one, that's the name of the instance name of the text, the, the dynamic text box. Uh, its actual value, the property is called text. It must be a string, so you can't actually assign it to a number. If you just choose score without this casting of string with the brackets, it's not going to work. You're going to get an error message. So we must cast the number to a string since text one is expecting a string value. Okay, so there we have it, and now we also do some collision uh, detection here. It's not working quite perfectly because we're off by one pixel, but we'll address that in the next video. But in general, <clears throat> if movie one dot hit test object movie two, so if if uh, the um, the hero is hitting the enemy, you die. So this is not this is kind of glitchy right now because we're hitting it by one pixel because we have a little off by one error but let's not worry too much about it right now okay so um, we already addressed this code in the first video hopefully you enjoyed this video and are leveling up in your ability to understand how to make real games awesome